Hello, everyone. Welcome to what used to be the 21 Hats podcast and is now the Business Advantage TV podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Feldman. This week's episode contains some awkward and uncomfortable silences. Normally, we might edit out those silences. This week, I think they're an important part of our conversation, an awkward, uncomfortable, painful, impassioned conversation that we had on Friday, June 5th, about what it takes to lead a business in the aftermath of George Floyd's murder and the nationwide protests. Does every business need to weigh in? What do we say to customers? What do we tell employees? What do we tell black employees? Karen Clark Cole, CEO of Blink, a user research and design firm based in Seattle, and William Vanderblumen, CEO of Vanderblumen Search Group, a recruiting firm that works with churches and other faith-based organizations, start the conversation by talking about how they've struggled to rise to an occasion for which they feel ill-prepared. But then Dana White, who owns Paralee Boyd, a chain of hair salons that cater primarily to African-American women, talks about a very different kind of struggle. Her struggle, not just to build a business, but to find a place in a country where she does not always feel welcome. I'm stressed, Dana tells us. I'm stressed. Dana suggests that even if it's uncomfortable, especially if it's uncomfortable, business owners need to take a stand. This is not about being comfortable, she says. As business owners, you're either over there or you're over here. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know that we've been tracking the experiences of five business owners through the pandemic. Along the way, we've had some difficult and important conversations, but thanks to Dana White, this one rises to another level. She delivers a powerful message, and if you know someone who might benefit from that message, I hope you'll share it. The episode is titled, I'm Stressed. I want to talk about where each of your businesses uh, stand, what's going on uh, with each of them. But but we've been through a couple of weeks, unlike anything uh, I think any of us have ever experienced. It, it's kind of almost been forgotten, uh, but I think we're still experiencing a pandemic. Um, and then, of course, that has been compounded by the murder of George Floyd and the protests that followed. It's, we're recording this on fr- Friday, June 5th. Uh, I think we're, we've had 11 days of protests that have followed, and obviously that's had an impact on all of us. Um, and I guess I'd like to start by just asking each of you how we, you're processing uh, these events. Uh, Karen, maybe I'll start with you. Seattle, uh, where Blink is, is based, has... Um, has been in the news every night there have been protests there uh what has this been like for for you uh and for blink it's been hard um it's it's been a long week for sure um i i I don't have all the words and that's (laughs) that's understandable that's been part of the problem so i can tell you one thing that has struck me uh as an individual and a leader of a company um, that has been most um, surprising and um, difficult is that many of our employees, and if you include our contractors, we're about 140 altogether of people that uh, do work for us in five offices. So we're not just in Seattle, we're around the country. Um, a lot of them are expecting me personally as a you know as the representative of blank to be their voice and i tell you that's not something that i expected i wasn't quite ready for that you know i i spend a lot of time in my life personally having a voice and using it and having a platform certainly with my nonprofit and you know for me it's more of an angle of encouraging girls um but but the idea that now um i'm representing you know how to stop racism and how to have a a fair and just society and you know like I, I i just don't feel qualified to to be fighting for justice on behalf of many people um but at the same time i'm um i'm seeing it as my responsibility like it or not and so i'm you know doing my best to rise to the occasion and to really listen carefully as to what people's struggles are in our company and you know of course in the whole country in the whole world we have a company forum once a month and we used it on thursday to talk about issues of race and justice quality and um 
I tried to explain to people that it's 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 incredibly difficult and the responsibility is enormous for me to get it right. And and so I was just open and honest with them about how it, you know I need their help to get it right and it's we're not going to get it right the first time. And and then I asked them to remember that they all have their own voices and they don't need to rely on the company to do that for them. And I think a lot of them haven't seen that yet. They're young and they don't realize at least this is all I can imagine. They don't realize yet that they have their own voice. Yes, you want to work for a company who believes in equality and and mirrors their values. And that's really important because that's the only way we're going to get companies to change and therefore parts of society. But but I'm encouraging them, get out there and use your voice. Like They all have incredible power that they I don't even know that they see they have. I've sort of switched my message to be less about let's figure out how the company can do it right and more about let how do we empower our 150 people cuz that's a lot that's a that's a big voice when you put them all together one of the things that i do want to ask all of you about is yeah the, the notion that you addressed karen of s- speaking out as a company s- saying something and I, I have to admit i i personally have mixed feelings uh about that i i certainly get why it's important for companies to especially let their employees know where they stand. Um, but I also, I, I got an email from Uber and you know what? I, I, I don't really want to hear from Uber about this. Yeah. So Lauren, I felt the same way um, on Monday when it hit me hard that that was expected and it better be good. Um, and but, it, but I'm all for making a statement so that it, because the the resounding response I got from our employees, which was, you know, this is helping me keep on, keep on, you know, like uh, I want to make sure that I'm, and I think about my own self, like I want to be in a place that I know values my beliefs, and it, at least at, at the macro level, and I, and I think. Uh, so, so I getting it. Yeah, you know, we didn't send out an email, but I, but I, you know, there's a place where someone can come and find it, and I think that's the appropriate place. You know, we post it on our usual social channels. But I, but I agree. I don't, I don't think we should be pushing it into people's faces. They can, you know, for in terms of a company statement. How about you, William? Uh, you, you happen to be in Houston, which is George Floyd's hometown. Um, what has this been like uh, for you and your business? Well, Lauren, I think the way you phrase that question is exactly how I have, for right or wrong, tried to think through this. What's this like for me and then my business? And, you know, for me personally, the whole uh, convergence of, you know, a death in Georgia, a death in Minnesota, a death... it feels different this time to me and has been a personal wake up call to me and made me um, drop back and realize, you know, I've had some really great black friends and a lot of African-American clients. I mean, most, most of the large historic African-American churches are our client. Um, but even with all that, I think, I think I'm realizing this week, I thought I get it and I don't at all. I got no clue. So that's me. And then you get to my business. Our business serves, whether it's a Christian school or a Christian nonprofit or a church, which is kind of the backbone of the business, like the church, when it's getting things right, has always been at the center of saying, no, you reach out to the other. You don't, you, there is no, there's like, like I saw a friend of mine post, you know, we can, we can agree to disagree on almost everything except racism. Uh, so our client base, if you want to move past me to the business side, really does expect to hear from us. And it's, it, it, you mentioned Uber, Adrian, my wife said, why is Lululemon emailing me about race? I don't like, it seems contrived for us. It's not, it's, it's a summons. Like we, if I don't, say something, then that is saying something. And so for us, in our very unusual circumstance, um, I wanted to wait. I didn't want to be 
presumptuous. And I didn't want to say and look at all the great things we've done and all the wonderful African-American churches or black gospel churches. or Like, we didn't do any of that. So I put a statement out yesterday that was just, here's where I am. Now, I have an advantage. My last name is the name of the company. So if I send it out, it is the statement, right? And uh, it's early, but I spent all day yesterday responding to people asking if they had permission to reprint, asking if they could send it to their staff, thanking me for admitting that I don't know what I'm doing and that I want to learn. Well, it may, it might, how did you articulate that? What, what, what did you say in the statement, if you can summarize? Yeah. I mean, I, I said, you know, for starters, I, you know, I haven't been a, a real Christian or faithful person my whole life. So there's a chapter in my life where I got pulled over by the police very regularly and for good reasons. But I never, ever once feared for my safety. You know, I've moved into new neighborhoods and I've had people say, welcome to the neighborhood. But I've never, ever, ever had someone come up to me and say, do you really belong at this pool? Um, you know, I, I, I go to a restaurant, I ask for a table. Usually I get a decent table, sometimes the one I want, but I've never had the recurring issue of like, why are they putting me back here? And, you know, one of my closest friends, uh, African-American who, whose dad converted to Muslim during the Cat Stevens era. So he has a horrible last name and he's black. And like, I mean, it, when we go to the airport together, I just budget extra time because <laughs> it's going to take a while. And, uh, that's sad, but, uh, you know, those are all things that he's really dealt with. And uh, I guess I just realized, like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And and that's where I started with the piece. I, I moved into, you know, Mr. Floyd's death happened right at Pentecost in the, in the church, which has Jewish and Christian roots. And I talked a little bit about that. And then at the end, I just, I told a story, you know, I, try, I tried to share places where I don't get it. Like, at the, at the risk of spending two or three minutes, I, I, I lucked out and got to go to the Smithsonian uh, Museum of African American History some, some time back, just on the fly at the end of the day, went by myself. I've never been in a museum where they don't have to tell people to be quiet, except this one. Because you, if you've been there, you go, you go down the elevator to the basement and you start about six floors below the ground and you're on kind of a mocked up slave ship and it's, it's crowded and it's dark and it, the sounds are weird and you make your way up and it's just, it's not overdone. It's not political. It's just real. And I remember getting past the civil war and past slavery thinking, okay, finally things are going to get better. And I got to the segregation floor where you walk through a train car and, and right in front of me was this biracial couple, young couple with a little daughter, couldn't have been more than three or four years old, maybe five. And we were walking through the train car and she looked at her mother and she said, mama, where would you have sat? And the mother said, well, I would have sat up here up front with all the white people. And she said, well, where would daddy have sat? And she said, well, daddy would have sat back there with all the black people. And I'm listening to this in the back and I'm like, oh my God, I'm really hearing this. As only a kid could say, she said, so where would I sit? <laughs> Which is a great question. And uh, the mother said, you know, baby, it would have been illegal for daddy and me to get married back then. So I don't think you'd be here at all. And I was just like, ah, oh, I don't get it. And I shared stories like that. Uh, I just tried to share where I am and be transparent and let the chips fall where they will. And not because it's right or it's, a, and I, my PR company said, oh, you need to start some listening sessions and start of this and of that. And I was like, no, no, that is not the point. And I, I know I've dominated the time with this answer, so I'll, I'll be quiet. But I, I'm just trying to share what's going on in my heart and hope that spills out into how the company reacts. So, Dana, obviously, um, this is different for you than for the rest of us. Uh, I suspect you're not learning things the way we are. You're not realizing things that you didn't know. This is something you've all known all too much about. How has this been for you? I'm stressed. That's certainly understandable. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. Even on this call, I'm stressed.
making no, you more stressed? No, please don't. No, I, it, it's, I, I'm on this call as I am in life. The only one. And that's not Lauren's fault or it's not that you designed it that way. And, and I wanted to be on this call because I don't have a choice, meaning I can't not be Dana on this call and in this life, nor would I want to be. As a company, Paralee Boyd is Waterford crystal clear. You walk into my salon as you have, and it, you're Waterford crystal clear. I've gotten backlash for my, my statement. I've had advice, maybe you shouldn't do that with the pictures on the wall. I have, I have stood my ground and said no. I have created a place for women that look like me to come in and see themselves reflected in every part of that salon. And I'm unapologetic for it and will remain so. And all of my locations will do so. So if that tells you you're not welcome, that's on you. We are devastated by what happened to George Floyd, but we are not surprised. George Floyd has gotten more attention than everybody else because this is what America is. We don't have the luxury of, of not dealing with it. We deal with it every day. We don't have the luxury of, well, you know, this isn't the time or the place. It's always time. Have I feared for my life when I've been pulled over? Yes. Has a gun been drawn on me because I left my blinker on too long? Yes. Have I been followed around the store more times than I care to admit? Do I have to tolerate the ignorance of people who are well-meaning? Absolutely. I'm stressed. You're right, William. George Floyd is different. You're absolutely right. Silence is compliance, as well as convenience is compliance. This is not about being comfortable. This is about you're either over there or you're over here. As business owners, you're either over there or you're over here. I'm sorry, Lauren, that Uber sent you something in your inbox that you didn't feel was appropriate space. I'm sorry it's in your face. Don't defend yourself. You make a stand. You take a stand. I've gotten emails, too. And I'm going to read you a snippet of one from somebody who is a business owner who drew a line in the sand. A snippet says, it is gut-wrenching that these things will need to be, that these things still need to be said, but now was the time to speak up and make it unquestionably clear. Black lives matter. We stand for love, equality, and change, and we reject all forms of social injustice, systematic violence, and murder. We stand in solidarity with all those working to rid our country of racism. And that is just one line. He took a stand for his staff, for his customers, and he's not worried about his revenue. That is a stand. So hard for people to say Black Lives Matter. They do. You're either over there or you're over here. And if you're uncomfortably in over here, ask yourself why. I'm stressed. I can't tell you how many groups on Facebook that I'm a part of, how many people find this so hard to take a stand. I'm stressed on this call because I face this call like I face the world, knowing that I am on here alone. It's no time to be comfortable. Was George Floyd comfortable? 
He wasn't comfortable. <laughs> no, a line, and I'm very passionate about it. And if I'm making you uncomfortable, so be it. This is my truth. And I matter. As a business owner, I say what I say because I have over 19 young black women looking at me and black men. As a business owner, you have customers, you have staff that are looking at you. And it's okay that you don't know, but you let them know you're figuring it out. It is your responsibility as a leader. And yes, it's heavy. Yes, it's supposed to be. But you carry the best way you can. You empower their voices. But as the leader of that company, yours is the loudest. Heavy is your crown. And you stand for your customers and for their staffs because we're all looking right now. We're looking to see, I'm getting tons of text messages and emails. Did you see they said nothing? Did you see what they said? And we are making decisions. That's how it's different for us. We are deciding who we deal with and how we deal with them. Because when faced with it, what did they do? How did they do it? There is no judgment. You all have done what you feel best, as I have done and am saying what I feel best. Answer to your question again, Lauren, I'm stressed because I face this call as I do the world, as a black woman. I'm done. Well, let me just say, I checked with you beforehand to make sure that you knew I was going to raise this and that you were okay Absolutely. with my doing that. And I did that knowing that you would be you, that you would tell us what you really thought. I'm smiling at you right now. I'm smiling at you. <laughs> you can't see me. I'm smiling at you. <laughs> and Dana, I want to thank you. Well, that's I'm where sorry I was to going interrupt too. you, Lauren. I, I, was yeah, just, I was just going to finish the thought that I think Karen wants to express as well, which is I think you've shown us a certain amount of respect, actually, by saying what you really believe, and we wouldn't want anything else. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said yes when you called me. I thought of not being on this call because I'm tired and I'm stressed, but I thought about it and I control how I'm on this call. I'm not on here. What would have stressed me out is to make you all comfortable. People ask me, Dana, what should I do? You know, and I told my friends, go figure it out. And even as business owners, even in business, whether you're making a decision as to how to, 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 to deal with race, or if you're making a decision on how to grow your company or making a decision on what paper to put in your printer, you might make a mistake. But you pivot and you move on. Don't be afraid to make a mistake in this. Just another every aspect of your business. Is this big? Yes. Should you get some counsel? If you can. But don't be afraid to make a mistake and be honest about who you are. You know what? I've talked to a business owner who's like, you know what? Honestly, it, I, I just don't care enough about black lives to do or say anything. OK, I don't agree. But that's his stance. He's wrong. Let me ask you, Dana. With regard to the messages that have been sent out by corporations, my concern has been that some have just seemed insincere. 
are you saying that it's better to send to it to address it in any way that you can than not to address it at all is is that the point that you're making kind of and it's hard because you know for some people it's enough for others it's not right but i'm i agree with you some of it is you know let's just get something out you know this this pacifying placating thing that is done you know george floyd's murderer didn't get arrested because they thought he was wrong they did it to pacify us that's it and that's the same thing some of these companies aren't putting things up because they think it's wrong they're doing it because well we don't want to see be seen as how many of these businesses are actually looking at who they are as companies who we are as people as as leaders so you're right they did some of them i read and i was like okay I mean, they put up something, I guess. And for some people who read it, it's enough. But I haven't seen anything as powerful as what I've seen in the snippet that I read to you. That is like, oh, he's water for crystal clear. It's amazing. How are your employees doing, Dana? From what I understand, they're, you know, same, you know, same thing, different day. But will he get? Con- but will they get convicted? Probably not. Lesser charge. Get a slap on the wrist. That's what we're waiting for. What we know. We're waiting for what we know. They're hurt. They're upset. They're tired. But this is America. We know where we live. <laughs> we know where we are, and we know what this country thinks of us. The people who look like us. And it was, I think what made the George Floyd murder different for us was the officers look in the camera. Every time I, every time I talk to somebody, it's how he looked in the camera as if he knew he could do it. So my employees are, you know, shrug shoulders, hurt, upset, tears, but we'll see. This is America. Dana, I listened to Al Sharpton's eulogy yesterday. And I found it very moving. I think he, in some ways, made some points that that you've made to us. He also said that he thinks this time is different, that he's more hopeful this time, that he sees signs that there might be change now. Did you hear that? Do you feel that i didn't hear the eulogy i don't know why i missed the eulogy yesterday but um the thing that makes this time different uh i love seeing the diversity in the protest that's exactly what he mentioned okay yeah i didn't see it but i love seeing the diversity in the protest i think it makes it different going forward i think we are years and years and years away of it not being okay that it's never done again newsflash there will be somebody else. There will be another George Floyd. There's just that George Floyd was not the last black man to die unnecessarily at the hands of white cops. This is not the last one. The change I see is the seed for the change to come, not the change what is needed now. No. No. And I'm hopeful, but it's not. It's not, this is the seed planted, right? And this is the seed that'll take root, but it still needs to grow, still needs to blossom, still needs to bloom, still needs to be fertilized and watered. But George Floyd, unfortunately, and I pray I'm wrong. Oh, that would be beautiful if I was wrong. (laughs) Oh, I would love if George Floyd was the last one. But I don't, this is America. I'm watching the protesters. I'm watching the police. He won't be the last one. Racism is who we are. It's in our fabric. Built on it. And unfortunately, in my humble opinion, in my regretful opinion, he will not be the last. Unfortunately. I pray he is. God knows I do. I'm in love with a black man. I have a black brother. 
I pray George Floyd is the last. I think you could tell from what Karen said at the beginning and what William said, and, and I would add myself to them as well, that we're, we're trying to figure out how to process this. And I suspect a lot of the people who listen to this podcast are going through that as well. If you don't feel like you want this weight on your shoulders, I respect that completely and you don't have to respond. But if you do have some guidance for us, some suggestions, especially in terms of what we as business leaders say to the public, what we as business leaders say to our employees, what we as business leaders say to our black employees, I, I would welcome that, but again, this this shouldn't be on your all on your shoulders. And I trust you. I trust. I've always told you I trust you. And so I'll say this: Don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. Growth and change is uncomfortable. And keep going, and don't be afraid. When you are standing. On, on the side right, and it's uncomfortable, uncom don't be afraid. And then if you get upset when you're uncomfortable, if you are uncomfortable because of what I said or of what you've heard or of the protesters, find the opportunity to grow and ask yourself why. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Therein lies the change, right? It's also okay not to know. I want you guys to be gentle with yourselves, but keep going. Be gentle. I've said that to everybody I've talked to who's like, oh, Dana, I'm just not where you are. Well, you wouldn't be, right? <laughs> it's like you wouldn't, you wouldn't be where I am, <laughs> right? That's a little a lot. That's all I'd ask. But Stop trying or don't try to initiate change or growth on your end comfortably, especially when it comes to race in America. And keep going. For those of you that have black employees, for those of you that have black and black clients, especially for those of you that have black employees, please know that we're tired Please know that if you, like I have been several times, the one or two or three black employee in an office full of people that don't look like me, know that they are in their car taking a minute before they come to work today. And it is your responsibility to do all that you can to create a safe space. We are tired and they are nervous because they don't know what they're going to get. But you make it better for them when you make a public statement that says, not here. When you say to your, your clients, not here, we are on the side of human rights and Black Lives Matter in this place. Your lives matter. We see you. I love you. And you are enough. People don't say that. Nobody said it to me. I was so mad at Barack Obama for running for president. <laughs> I was so mad at him because of what he put me in a position he put me in at work. I was very proud of him. But there was a side of me that was like, come on, Barack. <sighs> what do you mean by the position he put you in? Meaning that you had to defend him at every turn? I had to answer for him. I had become the deputy of the colored in my workplace. Everything he said that made them uncomfortable, I had to say, no, 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 he didn't mean that. No, 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 he'll be your president too. No, 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 because the, the alternative was to let them leave the break room thinking wrong. And I felt I owed it to that man to tell the truth or to bat away ignorance. So as business owners, for those of you who have clients, 
And for those of you who have people who work for you, not people of color, black people, people of color are not under the knee of the Minneapolis Police Department. Black people, be very clear as to that line in the sand. Black lives matter, human rights. This is where we are on the side of human rights. I love you, I support you, and you are safe here. I may not have all the answers, I may not be eloquent, I may not know the right words to say, but I'll tell you what, not here. And be very clear, and it should go out. Should be private. It should be well if you want to see it. No, this is where we stand on this issue. That's why this instance with George Floyd is different because it gives you an opportunity to take a stand. That's what you say to your staff. Please know that your staff is struggling. Please know they'll never show you because they're not sure if it's safe. And even if it is, you are still their boss. You are not their friend. But they will note and remember what you did to make them safe. Your customers will remember what you did and how you stood. They will remember. They may not, not, they may not stop working with you, but they'll file it away. They'll know. That's it. Nobody's asking you to be eloquent. Nobody's asking you to be Reverend Al Sharpton. Nobody's asking you to be Jane Elliott. Just be clear. Crystal clear. So I unfairly put Dana on the spot. I guess I'll do it to William and Karen, too. After what we've heard, and we only have a few moments left, William, any thoughts? Well, just that I, I, that I don't know what I'm doing. And that uh, for all the work we've done, to say that uh, we're working toward diversity, we're hiring toward diversity, we're working with churches th that I don't understand. I mean, that's the big learning for me. And we're trying to learn how to understand and hopefully some good dialogue and intentional listening uh, will help me and help our company. Um, because it, it's different it, yeah, as a white guy. It's different this time. It's just different. I don't know why. Maybe God's doing something in my heart. And I know I'm getting spiritual on a business podcast when I say that. But maybe it's just something going on in me. And I'll, I hope to understand better and to take action that reflects it. Karen, any thoughts? Um. I'm, I'm listening. I'm just listening. You know, I'm listening to our employees. And I think what Dana said about creating a safe space is really critical. And so that's, I mean, that's the one thing that I, I feel like I can do. And so I'm working hard at doing that. And then we'll see what we have to do next or what we should do or need to do or, you know, are empowered to do. And, uh, but I'm listening. As I said, it had been my intention to <laughs> to go around and talk to each of you about how each of your businesses are doing. Somehow that doesn't seem appropriate at this point. I think we just summarized it, Lauren. Our businesses are suffering. I mean, it, our businesses are made up of people. And so it's not like the business lives on its own, you know. So I think Dana's words are exactly describing how, you know, Certainly, everyone I come in contact with is feeling it's it's hard and it's not it's hard for it's hard for me and it, and so I think that's exactly how our businesses are doing. I guess I have a question. I've heard it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. I don't understand how it's hard, and then it's not. I don't understand why it's hard. That's not a judgment question. It is literally a. I don't know why it's hard. I'm like. I don't know, like maybe let me ask somebody so I can get an answer. Not, I can't believe it's hard. Why? It's, no, that's not how I feel. I feel like, huh, I wonder why it's hard. It's hard. Like, I think both of you guys said it's hard. I don't tell me how you're, how it's hard. Uh, 
I, I'm you know, not I've, sure how to answer it, honestly, but except <laughs> uh, it's the opposite of easy. I mean, it, it, it knowing how to represent 140 people for me is, and making sure I don't screw it up feels hard. It's the weight of the responsibility. And it's the, you know, I, I you know, <laughs> I feel I'm I'm really sad and disheartened by the whole thing, and that is hard. It, it's just maybe it's the word that I use, and it it could be a different word. I think maybe the question Dana is asking, Karen, is is it hard for you to know where you stand? Is that what's hard about it, or is it hard to articulate where you stand? No, it's hard to believe. Honestly, I I just the it it. it uh, there's there aren't words for it in, in terms of the yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just Tom. think it's hard I can't I don't understand why uh, you know and it's too big of a I, I don't want to uh, anything I say is going to sound like it's it's not. not big enough but it's just I just can't believe that this is how the world is I think it's it's hard to me to to get my head around it because it's just not anything that I, I have any close – I don't understand it. it. It makes no sense to me. It's not right. It's just – it's awful. And, I, you know, and again, none of these aren't the right words, but, I, but I'm just – all of it is just um, – it's, it's the weight of it is hard. William, were you going to say something? I, I guess so. Uh, I, I, What's hard for me is to get my mind around what you've lived through. And I think that's what I'm understanding. It's not hard for me to understand what's going on. I, I, our statement that I wrote, I thought, boy, if you really, William, if you really are realizing that you don't get it, then you better ask some opinions. So I sent it to several black pastors that I'm good friends with. I sent it to my workout buddy who's, uh, you know, black guy and and said what do you see when you read this where are the blind spots because i've got them i've had i'm realizing it's a blind spot and i think that's was, a great question william and, well and, and it's interesting the the one thing that several of them said to take out of the statement i'd said somewhere you know we have got to start reflecting behavior that will prevent things like the senseless lynching that happened and all of them said, don't use that word. And I said, why not? So when you say the word lynching, it's going to raise opinions and you're going to argue over this. I said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm using it because that's what it was. I think it's great. And, <laughs> I think it's great. And, 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 and honestly, I get to use that word. And maybe my friend that's black doesn't because it makes him sound, you know, victimized or whatever. But like I get to say it and it is what it was. So Lynch. like understanding where I am is really easy. Understanding how I learn what I don't know is the hard part for me. So I'm just trying to listen. And I know that sounds lame. I hope it doesn't sound evasive, mm -mm. but, but that is where I am. I think, I think Karen, you, you did it. I think you did it. You said, you know, I think when you make a company statement, when you, when you're trying to find the words, what to say to all hundred and, and some odd people, you say, it's like being the pilot of the ship. You don't run back and say, oh my God, we're, you know, this plane is about to crash and I'm really nervous and I don't know really. No, no, no. You call, you go back and you say, I can't believe this is happening. I am sad. Everything that you said, and I'm like, I don't see, she just said it. You did. I was like, I'm nodding with you. I'm sitting here smiling. I'm like, yeah, okay, you said it. And I think if you don't know what to say to your staffs, Look at you are your company, right? And start there and, and, and make the statement as the leader of your company. I am sad. This hurts me. I think when you tell them, when you share with them your struggle with it, you're, you're giving them part of your struggle and saying, help me with this. And I think that's something you should do behind the scenes with people you trust, right? I think as a leader, you know, I, my leadership style is I trust, I don't, I want my, my staff to see that I am, I'm, I'm in the ground. I'm, I'm right there. I'm not so much strong, but I'm not changing. I'm right. I'm right. You know, you can lean on me. You can rely on me. I'm not, you know, I don't really waver, right? Not saying who you are. I'm just saying, so with me, it's as simple as this is it. 
And I think you you said it like I was listening to you. And that's why I asked you, what is hard? And you said what's hard is the fact that we're here. The fact that this is this is reality. That there's that this even exists. I'm I'm like, OK, write that down. Write that down. <laughs> write that down. Well, I, I can tell you it's not really um, behind the scenes. We in our company forum yesterday, I spent the first five minutes in tears and I couldn't even talk while everyone watched me. <laughs> it's okay. So I mean, I'm not it's curious. out yeah. there. <laughs> it's out there. And it, but I think, you know, I, I'll ask any business owner that's listening, if it's hard for you to make a statement, this is not a hard, this is easy. It, it's, it's easy. And that's why I said you're either here or you're there. And you are here, Karen. And nobody's asking you to be eloquent. Nobody's asking you to be an orator. We're asking you to say, I'm here. Right. Same thing with you, William. I mean, boom, you said, and I said, when I watched George Floyd's video, I said, they lynched this man on, uh, on TV and video. It is a lynching. And that's it. It's a lynching. I don't, I don't necessarily agree. We'll take that out of there. Well, why? It's what happened. It's not your opinion. It literally is what happened. They killed this man. I mean, they murdered him. You could say murder. You could say lynch. You could say strangled. You could say, but that's, that's what they did. So if it's hard, look in within yourselves and figure out why it's hard. Figure out where do you stand? Watch the video. How does this make me feel? There's your statement. If, you're, if you watch the video and your statement is, well, he didn't really die from that. He had some other health issues. What? Because <laughs> that's how some people feel, <laughs> right? If that's where, then that's where you stand. That's it. I think for some people, it's hard because like you said, I've never had to deal with this. I've never had to deal with being a migrant worker. I've never had to deal with the issues they face because I've always been a citizen. But if I had migrant workers working for me and they were being mistreated, I would know what to say because it's, it's, it's who I am. And so that's what my question is. My challenging question for you, whether it makes you comfortable or not to the listeners and to the people on the phone is who are you? And, and find out. And if it's hard, curate, like evaluate that. Evaluate. I have no problem saying to migrant workers, no, you are safe here. And I dare somebody to come and purely void looking for you. We don't have any, you know, um, citizens or illegal citizens or whatever. We don't have them working with us. But if we did, I would say this is where purely void stands with that. You safe here. It's just that simple. But I do love the fact that nobody on the call is like, you know, I'm just so worried about my money. I'm just afraid that clients won't do business with me anymore. And you guys, to me, it's clear. We may not be the UX company for you if this is if this offends you. We may not be the service for you at Vander Blumen if this is how you feel. Like, I, th I think I heard that in both of your statements. And I think that's a, a great start. That's great. I've heard so many people, well, you know, I don't really know. I don't want to offend. Okay. There's your stance. It's so quiet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's uncomfortable, but. Um... Yeah, I think the important thing is that hard doesn't, you know, that, that doesn't mean shy away from it. That means lean into it and acknowledge that it's hard. I mean, that that's how I feel. It's like, wow, this is hard. And let's push into it and, 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 and uncover that. Yep. And who am I? Like, why is this hard? Right? right. I know what the right thing is. I know I saw that video and I know that that was wrong. And I can just, and then put yourself in your client's feet shoes, put yourself in your staff shoes, put yourself to any, in the shoes of anybody who can relate to that video. And then once you feel that, what do you say? And like I said, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be order. You don't have to be Jane Elliott, Al Sharpton. You don't have to be me, you know, whatever. You can say, I, you, you said it, Karen. Like, that's why I'm like, oh my gosh, she said it. You did it. <laughs> I mean, you did, right? 
I think it's important to acknowledge that there are different degrees of the different levels of being hard. Some things are really hard. Some things are <laughs> incredibly hard. Uh, it can be hard to find the right words, but that's not the same thing as, you know, having somebody's knee on your neck. <laughs> it can be hard to breathe. Right. Um, so this was in many ways hard, but not hard like that and uncomfortable, but I think important. Um, I think we all knew this would be uncomfortable going into it, but that was why it was important to do it. And I appreciate all of you being willing to engage in this conversation and deal with the discomfort and the hardness, uh, especially you, Dana. Again, thank you for being willing to tell us what you really think. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen. I need a drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need a drink. Thanks for listening, everybody. This episode was produced by Jess Thubaran, founder of Blank Word Productions. Remember, we started the 21 Hats podcast to help business owners feel a little less isolated, to let them know they aren't the only ones fighting these battles. If you got something out of this conversation, please help us reach more people. Tell a friend, subscribe and review us wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at 21 underscore hats. And let me know if you have a question or a comment or a topic you'd like us to cover. My email address is lfeldman at 21hats.com. See you next time.